So we have a couple minutes before our next talk, so I thought we could take some questions for Dr. Ulaner now. Um, anyone in the audience have anything they'd like to bring up? Not quite yet. Do we have anything on the... If not, while we're getting started, I can... <clears throat> oh, we have a question right here, Dr. Peterson. I'm going to defer to the people with true expertise in uh, um, uh, uh, MR imaging of breast malignancy who will know the data far better than me. I do apologize. That is, a, that is a great question. The use of, uh, of FDG PET-CT uh, or any other uh, PET-CT agent in the evaluation of neoadjuvant therapy. There are a number of publications going back to like Rich Wall um, uh, uh, maybe 20 years ago demonstrating that indeed you can track neoadjuvant therapy response with FDG PET. You can also do this. We showed it with, uh, with Luciclovine. Um, uh, so the answer is yes, it can be done. My little reason why I step back a little bit on that subject is because you can also do that with mammography, you can do it with ultrasound, you can do it with MR, and often you can do it with, with a, a, a physical exam. And most importantly, no matter how you evaluate neoadjuvant treatment response, uh, on imaging, the real gold standard is the pathology, and the pathologist will be up next. So what we're doing in imaging is trying to predict what we're going to see on the eventual pathology, and the pathology is the gold standard that determines subsequent treatment. If there are clinical trials that are designed with adaptive neoadjuvant therapy, like there is in lymphoma, you give two cycles, you do your FTG PET. If the FTG PET is negative, you go one way, and if the FTG PET is positive, you go a different way. Then I can see FTG PET or other molecular imaging agents being utilized in neoadjuvant therapy. To date, that has not been done, and all we're doing is predicting what the pathology is going to say, and still the pathology is the gold standard, so I don't utilize it on a day-to-day -day basis. What about metastatic globular in clinical trials? Are you aware of it being incorporated anywhere? FDG? FES. FES. One, one we have, so cohort two of ours are patients that are suspected recurrence, um, so for finding suspected recurrence. There are, um, I would not go out on a limb to say we should be using FES for treatment response, right? Uh, again, I like to say give FD, every breast cancer deserves at least one chance to be FDG avid, and if the lobular breast cancer is FDG avid, then you can use FDG reliably to track treatment response. FES has not been used and is currently not recommended for evaluation of treatment response. Um, uh, we can go into the reasons for that maybe offline, uh, so not to take up other, other people's time. And one other question for you while we have you here. We're relatively new to FES PET. We've been doing it for about a year. Can you comment on the systemic therapies that might be problematic for getting a reliable FES PET? So this comes up. This comes up. Um, uh, FES PET, if we go back, oh, sorry, my slide has disappeared, but if you remember it, we have the, 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 the tumor cell expressing a target, and then our agent binds to the target. So if you have systemic therapies that also bind to the target, then you're competing between your systemic therapy, which is provided at a very high uh, 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 volume. Oh, thank you very much, sir, for bringing that back up. Um, I'll just go to this to, as an imager, we like the images. Pardon me. Oh, right there. Uh, so 
if your, if your systemic therapy is binding to the target, then the molecular imaging agent has a di more difficult time and less reliable at binding to the target. So CIRMs and CIRDs that bind to the target could potentially block FES. So indeed, we screen patients that are referred for FES PET for tamoxifen and fulvestrant. Um, which need to be withdrawn, removed from the patient's circulation uh, prior to the patient uh, receiving an FES PET, uh, PET scan for a reliable result. Um, I will say that there is a misconception out there that this applies to all CIRDs and CIRMs, and that's actually not the case. It's just the ones that last long enough in your bloodstream in your body to be binding to your target. So fulvestrant, for example, has a biologic half-life of 40 days, so it needs six months or so to withdraw, which is why no one on fulvestrant is getting an FES PET scan. But the more uh, novel uh, uh, um, uh, uh, CIRDs, uh, such as elastricent, has a 30-hour biological half-life, and that only requires withdrawal of a few days before you can get a, a reliable FES PET scan. Thank you so much. So we'll have some more time for questions. If anything comes up, please feel free.